Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you two different ways of how to set up your projects using Angular 2 and Node.js. So the purpose of this is really to get you more familiar with the project setups as well as the file structure. As an added bonus, I'm going to be including Socket.io into the project. Here we are inside of my Sublime Text, I have two folders, option A and option B. So you can find the source code for these examples within my repo at Jack Black slash Node.js examples inside of this ng2 underscore node folder. So in here, you're gonna find option A and option B. So really the main difference between these is with option A, we're only gonna be running the node server. And in option B, we're gonna be running both the node server as well as the light server. So in option A, under public, you're going to see this lib folder once you run gulp. And this lib folder is going to copy over what we'll need for the front end in order to run Angular. And then we can just navigate to localhost 8000, which is running the node server, which is going to run our Angular files. So let me just open up this readme file inside of option A. So with option A, to run the project, you navigate into the root folder and then you type npm i or yarn. So yarn is basically the same thing as npm. It just brings down your node modules and then you need to run this gulp command. So this gulp file, all it does is it copies over the files that you'll need in order to run Angular inside of a public lib folder right here. So with option A, we're putting our index file and our system.js file inside of this public folder. So then in order to access the Angular framework, that's why we need to copy over these files. Okay, so right now I have two command prompts open. In the first command prompt, again, we're in option A of the folder. You would type npm i or npm install to bring down the node modules. And then you would type gulp. And Gulp is going to copy over the files that we need from the node modules and then paste them into the lib folder inside of our public folder. So that's what it's doing right now. Bootstrap, Socket.io. Okay, so once that's done, you run npm install, you run Gulp. Then you need to run TSC in a command prompt, which is going to compile the TypeScript code into JavaScript. Before you do this, you need to have the TypeScript compiler globally installed. So you would need to type npm-g TypeScript, which will bring this down. So since it's already been downloaded for me, all I would need to type is TSC. And this is gonna compile the TypeScript files. Then once that's done, inside of, again, option A, the main folder, I can just type nodemon and then server.js. I'll hit enter. And then it's going to run my server on port 8000. So let's look at our server.js file. Here we're just including a very basic express server with a port of 8000. And then we're sending express.static to join a directory of public. So what, what it will do is it will look in this public directory and find this index file, which in turn is going to read the scripts and it's going to load up our Angular application. Okay, so again, with Nodemon running, all we need to do is navigate to localhost 8000. So open up a new browser tab, go over to localhost 8000, and I'm going to open up my console. So I'll bring this up. And basically, you can see here that we're getting some replies from the server. We're getting server to client, do you read me over, and then loud and clear. Okay, now let's look at our uh, Nodemon console. So taking a look at our console, you can see that we're getting three messages, new connection made, client to server, can you hear me? And yes, it's working for me. So let's check out that. So that messaging is just coming from our server because I've included Socket.io. And in order to include Socket.io, all you need to do is a couple things. You include it in your package.json, which is right here. Then I can use it in my server.js file. I say io.onConnection. That's where we get this new connection made. And then I can send and receive events using on and emit. So I'm not gonna go into this in depth, but it's pretty simple. It's just using the observer pattern, meaning that 
we're creating names for the events and then we're passing and receiving data in the form of objects. And then what I've done here is in this app home and then home component.ts file, I've included socket.io client. Okay, I've set socket as socket.io client dot socket. So let me back this up. If I say dot, you'll see I get this interface and actually we're using socket interface. And th that's because I've included socket.io as a type. So in order to get the interface, how I have, all you need to do is open up your command prompt and then do this, say npm install dash dash save at types slash socket IO. And then I said this dot socket equals IO dot connect. And then within my ng on init, I'm sending and receiving messages uh, back and forth from and to the server. Now, if you were to make any changes to any of your TypeScript files, right? So I made a little change here. If I were to save this, your application isn't going to get automatically updated. You would have to recompile your TypeScript files. Now you can do it just like this from this terminal. Okay, you can run TSC right now, but what will happen is you'll you'll get your server refreshing over and over and over again. So you'll actually want to kill your server and then run uh, TSC in order to compile. So this option actually isn't as quick and easy and fluid of a development process as is option B, which we'll discuss right now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna CD into option B folder. And then over here, I'm just gonna kill my server and CD into option B. So now I'm gonna close all these folders and let's open up option B. And let's look at this readme file. So the process is very similar. You need to run npm i or yarn in order to bring in our node modules. You don't need to run gulp here. Uh, and actually I can just delete this. So I'll delete this. And I don't need that gulp file because we're, we aren't copying anything over to this public folder. Okay, so our index file is right here, right? So it's in the root of the folder as opposed to this public folder, as well as our system.js config file. And again, there were some minor changes within this. So this is pointing to our node modules. And if we look in option A inside of public, the system.js config file is pointing to lib, okay? And as you can see, we're pointing to our node modules, uh, node module slash socket IO client, as opposed to the lib folder. Now with this one, we don't have to keep on restarting and compiling our TypeScript files because we're running on two different servers. So what you would do is in option B, first type npm i or yarn, and then it's gonna bring down your node modules. Okay, then in another terminal, I'm gonna run nodemon server.js. So the same is in option A. In option A, we ran nodemon server, and it's saying it's got a new connection because I didn't close out this window. So let me close out this window, kill this, and start with the server again. Okay, listening on port 8000. And then in my other terminal, I'm gonna type npm start. And this is going to compile our TypeScript files and start a light server on port 3000. Okay, so here we are on port 3000. Go ahead and open up this console and you can see that we're getting the same console log messages that we did in option A. Server to client, you hear me over and loud and clear. And then we're getting the same messages on our uh, node console. So one of the main differences here is this allows you for more active development, right? So the changes that you make now on either your server folders, server files, as well as your public Angular files will all be reloaded as they are saved. So any changes that are made when you save the file, the servers are going to be restarted. Otherwise, the code is exactly the same. However, there was one interesting difference here inside of my home component.ts file. So in this instance, when connecting to the socket, I need to specify a port here. 
and this port needs to match the port that my server is running on. If you look at option A, I'm using this line right here, this socket IO, this dot socket IO equals IO dot connect, right? And then I commented out this line above. One of the things to note is inside of this server folder, I haven't really, I haven't put anything. I just added controllers, models, folders, as well as a routes file is just placeholders. So I'll leave that for you. And hopefully you can learn something from this and use this inside of your own projects.